Hey there, Scipio here, and this is a continuation of the diff school. Uh, in this uh, video, we take a look at pulling out this ARB locker and getting the locker fit to the ring gear, and uh, we learn about getting our parts stoned. So I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, I'll leave you to it. Thanks for watching. Kind of careful how I handle this. So generally, I. I always just use a piece of cardboard, essentially as a cutting board, just to keep from banging up the hardened tool steel parts. So now we're going to stone some parts, which this is uh, an important step that we don't ever skip. So, so this is machined. You can tell this wasn't packed the best. Um, so see all these bang marks that just came out of the crate like this. If you can rub your finger across that, you can feel this high ridge all the way around here. Yep. Um, you know, I'm not, you know, nicks where these bolt holes are. And then the other thing, we, we look at that and we look at the bottom of the brand new gears. So from the heat treating process, there's all kinds of things can happen. Lazy machining, lack of deburring. We can see a nick right there. Um, so for whatever reason, from manufacturer to manufacturer, they all seem to be consistently hard on the parts. So as a gear installer, it's important to observe that and recognize it and not ignore it and, and make sure that we're knocking down any high spots because for high performance use we do have a tolerance that we're allowed to live in as far as setting these gears up we have a minimum range and a maximum range but for high performance use we want to be on the minimum part of those ranges and you're not going to have the confidence to do that if these gears are not in here tight so high spots on this you know and, and torquing it down the high spots are going to wear later as the vehicle is being used and then it's going to become loose you know just like a little piece of grid in there or anything works its way out later then whatever your your torque specs were set at they're, they're now not going to be as tight as they were so it's really important to make absolutely sure that when these when the ring gear is bolted to the carrier that it's absolutely totally on flat all the way around and not a couple thousand high on one side the thing about gears are that they're strong but they're brittle so that's why I'm handling this on a piece of cardboard that's just going to go in the trash. Um, you know, I'm not looking to, to, to drop this on, on metal or, or chip it. So if you feel with your own finger here, there's some really sharp burrs that have overhung here. Oh yeah. So if we ignore those, and here's another one in that corner real bad. So if we ignore those burrs, and there's a little slight mash mark, what can happen is you can get a false torque spec on the carrier straps. So say this is all, say we put this all together and we tighten our carrier straps up and the carriers inside there. If we tighten those down, that torque spec is relatively low because these are cast iron soft metal. So that's like 60, 60 to 80 pounds is the average carrier bolt torque spec that's not very tight so if there's big burrs between the carrier bearing cap and the housing you can possibly not have that tight enough because those burrs in there are pushing the parts away from each other then after a few hundred miles the burrs wear down from some highway use and vibration and now you have loose carrier straps see how easy it is to fix it <laughs> Yeah. Super easy to fix it. Just a little time. Yep. Just recognizing what's going on. 
this shoulder right here is where the front uh, pinion bearing race was. We've already pounded that out and we've pounded the inner race out. But before we put the new races back in, we're really going to take a look and make sure there's no burrs, no grit from us cleaning out the old oil. We want to make sure there's absolutely nothing in the way that's going to prevent the new race from going all the way to the back. Because where these live are part of the pinion preload tension and also part of the pinion depth. So if that changes later, a few hundred miles into the new gears, um, it can be a problem. Sometimes the splines on the very end of the pinion have some wax on them too from, from packaging, particularly for Dana Spicer is kind of common to that. You want to make sure that's off these splines because it makes it a pain in the butt to get the new yolk on. Is that just a solvent that you're using? Yeah, this is a mineral oil um, solvent. It's not horrible for your hands, but I try not to bathe in it. I've cleaned this, we've stoned it, we've cleaned it with mineral oil in the parts washer. And now I'm going back and flooding all these holes with a, a really dry type solvent that evaporates really well. So that when I lock tight these bolts in, they're, they're really, really clean pockets. So usually this takes a couple tries, fill it full of brake clean, and uh, blast that out. This ring gear is, is very brittle. It's tool steel that's been hardened. And the ring gear bolts themselves are also hardened bolts. So when you tighten a hardened bolt into hardened threads, and in the case of the ARB that's going in, even what it's bolted to is, is a tool steel. So none of that is soft metal. So brittle metals are always what's most likely to vibrate loose. So that makes the it just really important that these holes are, are clean and oil free because we're totally counting on the, the Loctite to keep the bolts in as the years go by and the miles stack up. Just kind of giving this a spray to get the oily substance is off so it's not interfering with our Loctite either. So these bolts won't be getting used. All right, so unfortunately, the uh, pre-threadlocked bolts that came with our kit designed to go here don't actually fit through here. So we're gonna have to come up with a plan B, which will be finding some different bolts. But if you notice here, they alternate smaller sizes and bigger sizes so if we find a smaller size that'll fit that hole in through here we might be golden all right so we found the right size bolts for this but unfortunately it still doesn't fit through there so Paul here is gonna have to drill out all of these holes so we're gonna have to do a little bit of work to make it all fit but we'll get there So the first step is just to align it with the transfer punch. Yeah.
very tight fit, it looks like. As far as how tight the carrier is on the actual ring gear. Some of these go right on, some take like a half hour. I'm real gentle with this. Like, this could go wrong. Like, if you, if you were that guy, that just weren't kind of. You get it all cranked down and it's just crooked a little bit. Because yeah. you didn't bring it up slowly. Because you can bend this stuff. Like, you wouldn't be able to bend the ring gear itself, but the carrier is good. If we didn't do a good job drilling the holes real good and getting this all lined up just right, we wouldn't be able to finger these in. You know what I mean? Yeah. They'd be like jammed. But... It's also why it's important to have all 10 bolts in. To me it is anyway. To have all 10 bolts in while you're fitting the ring gear. That way, you do, when you do get to this stage, you don't have problems. 